Our project really focused on um, the Japanese families on Vashana Island. Um, it, it was a thriving community uh, prior to World War II, and um, many business owners and super engaged in our community. In the 1930s, not quite 90 years ago, the Japanese community gave um, a gift of 100 cherry trees to the school district. There are four of those original trees that are still uh, remaining. And part of our project was to work with our Vashon Island um, Farm Club. And they have um, successfully taken starts off the remaining trees and grafted them. And so um, we are hoping to recreate the 100 trees to um, replant not only on our school district property, but on our community partner of Mukai Farm and Garden. Um, as well as the Heritage Museum here on Vashon. So that's a piece of it that connected to the uh, Japanese American community. And then our AP history students worked on uh, biographies for all of the 30 students who were impacted by the removal. Um, and so they um, did online research. They worked with our Heritage Museum here on the island who had has previously done extensive work and also conducted interviews with family members when available. Um, and so those biographies have all been turned over to our Heritage Museum and they'll be housed on their website. They're not yet posted there, but that's where they will live um, for the time being. And then as part of the um, reintroduction of the new cherry trees from the old, we um, had Chantal create a permanent sign, a graphic for a permanent sign that's going to be installed on campus that um, celebrates and commemorates um, the Japanese American community and the 30 students who um, were impacted by this removal from our school district. Um, and so that's sort of the broad overview of what, what we've been working on. I did want to just um, say we're very thankful for all of the partnerships that we have on Vashon, the Mukai Farm and Garden, Vashon Heritage Museum, Vashon Island Fruit Club, and then of course the work um, with the students in, in our high school who have worked on this. Um, and so appreciative that we were recipients of this grant because it's allowed us to um, really move the project forward and very excited excited um, for the future and the, the impact for all of our island as well as the larger community. So I'm going to go ahead and turn over to Chantal and I'll post some links in the chat for articles about the project um, if you'd like to look at those as well. Okay, I'm just gonna share my screen. Hang on one second. Um, okay, can can everyone hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Okay, thank you. Um, um, oh, so, uh, hang on one second. Let's see. Okay, so I, I put together um, kind of a little slideshow. Um, I, to be honest, I wasn't really sure um, what what you guys would want to hear from me. So I hope I hope it kind of covered it. But basically, I'm going to talk about the project and sort of my process in it. And yeah, um, so some some of the photos are not super important, but it's just kind of. The whole the whole process. So, so as Stephanie said, um, the 100 cherry trees were donated in the 1930s by the Japanese community, and um, John from John Stanton from the the high school and um, Rita Brogan from Mukai and Bruce Holman from the Heritage Museum, they kind of partnered up and um, decided that they wanted to have a sign to commemorate the cherry trees and also the students that 
the Japanese students that used to go to the high school before the internment. And so um, how I got involved is that recently I've been doing a lot of volunteer work with Mukai and Tina, the executive director, she knew about this project. And so she kind of sent me an email and asked if I was interested. And I was like, of course, Tina, I'm interested, but I'm not a professional artist. Um, also, you know, I was born in Japan, so I don't know if I'm the right person because I don't really come from that, you know, that background of having um, family that's been interned. Um, but I realized, you know, having gone to the high school and kind of knowing sort of the lack of that history there that, that I kind of was uniquely qualified to, you know, to cover it. Plus there's just like not a lot of Japanese American artists that have that family background on Bashan, um, sadly. Um, so, uh, oh, hang on one. So this is the sign that I made. Um, and when I'm done going through the slideshow, I'll kind of share another screen um, where I can kind of scroll through the sign and sort of point out some details. So my, my first step was, I, I've never done any project like this. Like I said, I'm not a professional artist. So I kind of had to sort of figure out what am I doing? Like, what is this sign that I'm going to make? Um, so my first step was to go to the school and visit it because it's really different from when I went there. Um, but the, the trees were there, obviously, and this, this spray painted rock was actually there when I went to high school. Um, and then, you know, I had to think about sign design. And so my partner and I walked around Bashan looking at various signs to sort of get inspiration about what is a good sign, what is a bad sign. Um, and then um, and then I wanted to get some inspiration from the Japanese community. So I went on the Remembrance Trail walk and just kind of took in all the sort of different elements. Um, I was really inspired by the um, Hirabayashi place window hangings. I really love that it's sort of kind of this graphic novel style, but it's also a collage of imagery. So that was kind of my, my main inspiration and just kind of seeing different public art. Um, I think this is Amy, um, Nikai Tani's work in um, in this little alleyway. And I just think it's really inspirational that she's also kind of just a regular person, not a professional artist making public art. I think it's really great. Just taking in more inspiration. And then I went to Wing Luke Museum because I really love this sort of modern Asian aesthetic um, that this thing of like kind of combining like a lot of cultural stuff with maybe pop culture and kind of creating just like a whole different art genre. So that's kind of what I was thinking when I started. And then um, then I went to the Heritage Museum on Vashon where I actually went to daycare when I was a little kid. Um, and I sat there for hours looking through all the yearbooks, um, just picking out, you know, from these class photos, the different Japanese students. Um, um yeah just like going through different um extracurricular stuff and really getting a sense this i didn't end up using this photo but i just thought it was really interesting that 
this was the tennis team back then and it's majority Asian. Um, it's, even now it's not like that. <laughs> So it, for me, it was actually kind of a learning experience because I knew that there were Japanese people on Vashon before World War II, but I, I guess I hadn't really fully understood like, how many there were. Um, this was my initial kind of doodlings after going to the museum. I just did quick sketches of the students and drew them on construction paper to get kind of a sense of, you know, the layout and stuff. Um, I learned how to use Illustrator <laughs> for this project and I got a drawing tablet. This is my new office setup for the next few months. Um, and this book, um, I didn't know about it before starting this project. Um, but it, it was really helpful for me. It's um, some of the only color photos of the internment camps. And um, I used it to help me pick out a color palette. And also I used it to pick out skin tones. Um, so it would be kind of more, more accurate. And it was also just really inspirational, the photographer Bill Mambo, he kind of captured um, like more of a, a lot of the photos of that time are really kind of bleak and of people frightened and, and I mean, rightfully so, but, but his photos captured sort of the day-to-day -day people just trying to enjoy their life even in the camps. And I thought that it was, you know, kind of more the sentiment that I wanted to instill in my sign was kind of this resilience, um, this like happiness resilience. <laughs> um, so here is the final product again. And we invite, unveiled the sign at the Day of Exile ceremony um, on May 15th. Um, here's kind of a temporary sign. The actual sign is gonna get reprinted on something more permanent and be installed next spring when the cherry trees are in bloom and we'll have a ceremony, maybe like a, a, a cherry tree viewing picnic. Um, yeah, so I am gonna exit out of this and I'm gonna share my screen, um, a different screen. Um, How am I doing on time? You're running right up against it, but I'd love to see the sort of final iterations okay, okay. of your sign. Yep. Okay. Um, so this right here is this the would have been graduating senior class of 42. Um, this guy right here, Daigo Togami, he, um, he was going to be the valedictorian that year. Um, and here I'll give you the brief version. Um, this is Mary Matsuda. She was an honorary graduate in 2017. And, um, you know, she's pretty famous for writing the book Looking Like the Enemy and um, becoming Mama San. Um, and then this is Sumi Sakai. And um, this is her actual suitcase that is on display at Mukai. Some relatives were visiting and saw her name written somewhere and realized, oh, that's our Aunt Sumi. Her old suitcase is still in mom's garage somewhere. 
and they sent it to Mukai. And so it's on display and it has a sign that says, you know, what would you fill the, what would you take with you? And so I kind of had the cranes coming out of there as kind of a symbol of resilience and just like that what you take with you is, you know, just how, how to make the most out of that situation. And over here is Mary Matsuda again with her brother Yonichi and they're visiting their family um, at Heart Mountain. Um, Mary was in the nurse corps and her brother was in the 442nd regiment. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I really enjoyed making the sign. It was really a new experience for me. Um, yeah, thank you.